Hello, we're going to be working on our one point perspective falling back into space project today. So you're going to need a large 12 by 18 sheet of black paper, a white colored pencil to start out with, or a regular pencil, so if you can see the reflection. You're also going to need your hand and your shoe. So let's go ahead and get started with this. When we think about things falling back and away from us, that means they're going to get smaller. But when they're closer up to this, they're going to be larger. So the first thing I want to draw on here that's going to go at the bottom are going to be my shoes. Then once you're done tracing your one shoe, you're going to put your other one up, kind of put your heels together. Since you're standing and looking from snail's eye view up at you or ant's eye view. If you were an ant on the ground staring upward, this is what you would see. And then you can put your shoes back on. After that, you're going to be using your hands next. When you use your hands, you're going to want to keep them like this, but apart because you want your face to fit in between them. So your hands are kind of going to go off to the side and you just need your palms. And you'll notice that they're straight up and down. I keep my pencil straight up and down when I'm tracing. If I were to tilt it, it's going to make them smaller. If I tilt it this way, it makes them bigger. We don't want that. We want your actual size fingers and hands on here. Now, I can't draw through my wrist, so I'm going to stop, connect the bottom. Here's the tricky part for me. Hi. I cut my finger the other day with scissors. Be careful always when using scissors in art class. I am right-handed, so to trace my left hand, <laughs> or trace with my left hand, I'm going to be going a little slower. There we go. And then we're going to finish off the bottom of that hand. So I have two feet two hands, and now I'm going to start my self-portrait. That's my head. And when I do my head, it's going to go kind of up here. And it's going to be a little smaller looking because remember, my head's far away. It's sort of an oval shape, and I'm lightly sketching this, not pushing too hard. So there's my head in the background. And I'm going to remember my portraiture rules, right? So your eyes are about in the middle of your head. So my first eye would go about here. My other one is under my thumb. That happens sometimes, right? And then you'd have your eyebrows. Again, I'm just doing light, gentle sketching. And then your nose is about halfway between your chin and your eyes. So you do one, two, three, because you have the middle of your nose and then the two nostrils on each side. And then your mouth is about halfway between your chin and your nose. If you want to be smiling, you got to turn up the corners a little. Thin upper lip for me. There we go. And then your eyes. You'll notice your irises. Actually, you don't see the tops and the bottoms. They go underneath your eyelids a little bit if you look closely in a mirror. And then your pupils in the middle. So you always want to do those like that. And then you'll have your eyelid, which is going to be a second smaller line, thinner line above your actual eye. And you can start th thinking about how your eyebrows are going to look. Now, you don't want to keep going in white because eventually we need to switch over to the crayons to start adding the same color of our hair that we have. And then I'm going to do, I have my hair twisted today. So I'm going to show that little twist in here and the rest of it. Here's our bell for the morning. It'll wake us up like that. And then my other one started to this side with a little bit of a twist. And then some of it comes down because I have my hair down around that. Again, I'm going to go back and add color, but this is just kind of to get the general idea going. And your neck is going to come out of the side of your head. You're not a bobble head. Your neck always comes out from the edges of your head. You can feel it if you put your hands up next to your head on your neck. And then this particular day, I'm going to be wearing a shirt. The other thing we have to think about is you're not really even going to see your arms. They're just going to go from your shoulders to your hands because they're hidden behind your hands a little bit. And then your shirt is going to come down kind of like this. And remember, it's far away, so it's going to be a little skinnier looking where you're bending at the waist. And you can put on whatever kind of collar you have or whatever other designs are on your shirt for the day. Maybe you have a little jacket on, some 
buttons. We're going to worry a little bit more about details later. Kind of like that. And then if I have on pants, um, for my pants, I'm going to have that little V kind of my waist. So if I have on a belt, you could see the belt. And little buckles, and this is where details make a big difference in your drawing. You could even do the pockets. Right, and then stitching on the pockets. Okay, and then for your shoes, you're going to have to take them off, flip them over, look at the bottom of your shoes, and kind of figure out what are the patterns that are on the bottom of your shoes. And why do you think they were designed like that? Sometimes patterns are there to add extra grip. For sports. Sometimes they're just to make an interesting impression. And sometimes they're just decoration. Especially if you notice you have a pair of really slippery shoes that like to slide a lot. Those ones are just to look at and be pretty. Some patterns are more difficult than others. If you can figure out a way to simplify your pattern a little bit, feel free to do that. But don't take things away that are there. I don't want you to just delete something because it's tricky. Ask a neighbor, maybe, what's a way I could make this pattern a little bit more simple? So for this one, for example, I'm just doing like a sideways checkerboard pattern. Because if you look at my shoe, it's not really like that. It's a bunch of curly S's. That would take me forever to do. But I don't have that kind of time, and neither do you. So for today, we're just going to translate that into a crisscross type pattern on the bottom of my shoe. The other thing we want to look at are your palms. Your palms have these different kinds of wrinkles. See, when you go like this, you can see what causes those wrinkles. We want to make sure we add those in to your palms that are on here. So you're just going to gently kind of trace some of those in. You don't have to have all of them. It's just some of them. And then the places where your knuckles bend, you're going to want to add those creases in so that we know where they are. Some of your creases will be bigger, some will be smaller, because the older you get, the less elastic -y your skin is on your fingers, so it tends not to bounce back as much, and you get more wrinkles. That's just part of life. When you're younger, it stays really rubber bandy and electric, you know, alive and elastic -y, where it'll just bounce right back and you'll have a smoother skin. That's just how humans tend to age. We're going to go back in here, add the little palm prints, and the different muscles. You'll start kind of seeing how those look like they're forming around your fingers to cause all those different curvatures. And if you have any fingernails showing, I'm going to just draw those in a little bit, not too much though. And some knuckles on the back on your thumbs will show a little bit, sort of like that. The next thing we're going to look at is how to color everything in. We're going to be working with some construction paper crayons today, so of course we don't have every color that you're going to need, but we're going to have a lot of similar colors. And you'll notice when you draw with construction paper crayons, they show up really well. And you're just going to trace your other lines that you had that were already existing very carefully. You don't want to go off of them because our white pencil does not erase. Silver wood, but not white. Kind of like that. And then I'm going to go through and I'm going to very gently start coloring those in. Gently, because I want to go back and I want to add in some of the shadows here in a little bit to make these look more 3D. And I want it to be nice and smooth. Yes, I'm covering up a lot of my other lines, but that was to help me understand where my shadows are going to be going. You'll also notice that when I color in, I'm coloring all in the same direction. I'm not changing and going horizontal, vertical, diagonal. I'm just going vertical, up and down. Again, that's for consistency so that my coloring looks smooth. And on this part of my hand, I can start coloring 
sort of in the same direction that my hand goes. So I know my thumb, that meaty part, curves around here a little bit. And that this other part is going to start curving more up this way. I'm making sure you see all of this in a regular time motion so that you can really understand how to make that crayon be smooth and give the illusion of it filling in that hand. Now again, it's not perfect, it's not 100% covered, but it's nice and smooth when we look at that and we're coloring. Then I'm going to add some highlights. Now you'll notice with our crayons that we don't have a whole lot of color selection, so I'm going to pick the next darkest color that's going to be kind of a brown. I don't really like the brown, so I think what I'm going to use instead is going to be a red color. And it's okay with this one to play with colors a little bit. Sometimes when you're adding shadows, they aren't necessarily black on top of a color to make a shade. They're usually an additional color. So, for example, this time I'm going to be using the red to represent my darker colors. Like this. And I put the shadow on this side of my finger. And I push a little harder and then lighter as I work over. And I go back, put in some of those knuckle lines. That meaty part down here. And then if you look at your hand, it's always a little bit darker in here. So I'm going to spread that out just a little bit. Kind of a triangle shape across there. And pick back up on this side of my hand where the other shadow would be. Add those lines in. I push a little harder to add in the crease lines that we had in there. And then there's usually another triangle down here as part of your hand in the shadowing. Kind of like that. So you're going to start giving it more of that realistic shadowy type look with some of those details. Okay, my camera died while I was coloring. I apologize for that, but you get the idea of how to color in your picture. The next thing you want to do is put in your background, and we're going to do us falling back into outer space. So down here, we're going to do the edge of the earth, of course, in blue. I'm going to pull some green. I'm going to add in some of my continents. You can actually just sort of do any old shapes in here because it's difficult to tell from our picture what that would actually look like. And we want it to be a little bit rounded, so you're going to color darker on your edges, a little bit more solid, and lighter as you come away from those edges, because with the curvature of the earth, it actually makes the colors look darker since they're layered like a lens and a little thicker, but then their colors look lighter as they come down. Same reason when you look up into the sky, it appears darker blue in some areas than other, or a little bit more solid blue than others. Again, dark into a gentle coloring that's nice and light for your earth. Don't forget your water in between your continents. And of course you can go back in and you can add in your green. And then of course if we're in space back here in the background you might want to add some planets or you can add some stars. Just a little something to recognize that there is indeed space out there. Maybe I'll do the edge of a sun. Oh, I like the idea of a planet up here where I can do a planet and then I can do some rings around that planet. Kind of go off the edge over there. Or maybe you want to do like a shooting star or a comet. Something out there in the night sky. Make sure things are going behind you. They don't go on top of you. 
Some people like to do little satellites. All sorts of fun little things you can do. And then if there's any shadowing you want to go back and do in a little darker, now is the time to do it. Just don't let things get too muddy or too dark. Keep them nice and light. And then you can turn these in. Great job on the falling back self-portraits.